Hello my fellow orc and orcats. I'm King Link and today we're going to do a last look and review of Middle Earth Shadow of War. Welcome to my first review of 2019. My new year resolution this year is going to be to continue to grow this channel, get a few more recent games to look at, and hopefully hit E3 with a media badge. With that in mind, you can help me out by subscribing if you haven't already, or getting others to subscribe. Ask your friends and family, even strangers on the street, go for it. Greet them with a, have you heard of King Link Reviews? You should have. It'd be a great thing to do and I'd really appreciate it. With that said, let's move on to the game. Now, I'm going to go fast here because there's a lot I have to say. Now, Shadow of War looks good for the most part. Check out the screen, I'll be playing some of the late game content. Unfortunately, there's a single save file, so from what I've seen, I can't switch to the beginning of the game. I'll keep it spoiler free as best I can, and we'll look at the large seed system that the game has. Though I will say the recording seems to have caused a few stutters, though this isn't normal performance for the game, though I do have the graphics on a bit of the low end. The graphics here are mostly good, and the fact is the game focuses on large battles with tons of characters. There's a lot of variety in the look of the map and monsters. Every one of the orcs you see is unique, and I don't know if I've ever seen two that look exactly the same. This is the much-touted nemesis system, and honestly, it makes a lot of unique characters to check out. You can also see orcs who survive death actually come back cooler. You can see, like, their body stitched together or an arm replaced by a hook, and it's rather cool when it happens. Though, there is some graphical problems here. Sometimes, rarely, the animation system wigs out and shows enemies attacking in the wrong direction. The times I've noticed this is in the last stand mode, but it may happen elsewhere. In addition, I try to look at, at Talion up close a bit. He looks fine because he has the hood up, but sometimes in the game itself, uh, the cutscenes, his hair looks bad. And when you get up close to him in the story, it looks even worse. Here is hard to do, but there's been cheats to fix it in this industry for a while. But Shadow Mordor looked better than this in my opinion. Why is the main character a step back? Now, I've talked about this a bit in the first look, but we're going to go back to it. Shelob. Act 1 focuses on the Spider Queen Shelob, and it's one of the few places that the game diverges from the movie and its graphical designs. But man, Shelob is a great character. The sexy witch in this game that they call Shelob isn't. And I call it out because it's laziness. Rather than develop an interesting and diverse character, we get an archetypal sexy seductress. This isn't Yennefer or Trish from uh, Witcher. They, they look ha hot. Human witches would try to look attractive or not. That's fine. But Shelob doesn't have the power of transformation. She's a spider, hard period. This really leads us into the story. Shelob now suddenly has the power of transformation because they wanted a sexy witch. The early chapters with Shelob is very weak from a story standpoint, and a lot of missions are rather simple, and this is true of most of the game. The early game, though, lacks the domination elements of the series, which limits it, and focuses on the siege of Minas Ethril, and, well, it's lacking a bit. You form a new ring that has power and you've given it to Shelob for reasons, which really aren't explained well. This is a new ring of power that's all dominant, but your ghost spirit, which admittedly I, I'll butcher his name, uh, Calembro or something, but I'll just call him uh, Celembro, gets captured and you trade the ring for him. Okay, I guess that makes sense, but then at the end of chapter one, Shelob just throws the ring back at you. What? Why? Well, yeah, the story reasons, but it's rather procedural and amounts to, you're going to get the ring back now so that you can start dominating enemies. It's not a strong story, and it's also a great example of the rest of the game's approach. It really, the story is held back by the nemesis system. It constantly wants to throw one of its random enemies into every mission. And okay, that works, but the problem is they're throwaway enemies. There are a few main storylines, and each storyline does become good after a few worthless uh, uh, missions, but there are three main enemies in the game that are not part of this nemesis system, and they all get a remarkable amount of development, and that's what makes it good. It's rather good once you get there, but still... This is Lord of the Rings. Now, Lord of the Rings is one of the most influential books ever written. The writing here isn't up to that level. You get the ring back for a reason. She loves is sexy because that's what sells. There's really no subtext to this game at all. Tolkien's beauty is very diminished here. He wrote about man's nature and the idea of environmentalism versus the march of progress, as well as many other features. There's even the idea that the ring is the atomic bomb, and there's a rather good analogy there, though the atomic age and atomic power kind of happened 10 years after he started writing the books. The point, though, is his writing is legendary and can be applied to so many different things. Shadow of War is like a fan fiction someone wrote that didn't understand the original writer. 
Now, I don't want to spoil the ending, but I have to, a little bit. The main ending of the game, after 60 hours or so, is going to piss off a lot of fans of Tolkien's work. It doesn't just insult the style of his writing, but dear god, it starts to change the canon and then tries to say, no, 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 this is a real story. And as a fan of the books and Tolkien as a man, it's a huge insult. Fans of Lord of the Ring are going to get irked here, and they make a non-canon story, but then try to make it seem like they're saying, no, this is what really happened. It's canon. Wink, quick. It's not. It's two fingers straight up at um, fans of any th other form of this media. And that's the problem, because this isn't just a popular young adult flash in the pan book. It's like I said, one of the most influential books ever written. This is the book that defines a lot of fantasy. D&D, Blizzard, pretty much anything that has elves and orcs, all owe their st storytelling in some way to Lord of the Rings. Now, I know I've hit the story hard, but it's really a problem to me as a fan of the original series. There's more, but check the in, in the description if you want to hear more about the various missions. Let's talk about gameplay. Now, the gameplay starts off weak, as I mentioned. The focus of the gameplay uh, is always going to be about the nemesis system, and early on it just means that there's ma random major enemies that talk and appear in missions. It means you can have a unique experience from everyone else, but at the same time it also means they can't develop the characters as much. However, the nemesis system is quite great outside of the missions. You have Ologs, they're the bigger orcs, you might see one or two, uh, and every enemy feels unique and looks it. It's actually really interesting, but as a main feature it's limited to how much you can interact with it. Now, Act 1 of the story is really weak, and I mentioned, I, I almost turned off the game after about 10 hours because it really doesn't do much interesting early on. But I was reviewing the game, I pushed on, and I did find an interesting game, albeit late. I spent about 20 to 30 hours before I really liked this game. And if I stopped earlier, this would have been a non-recommendation, a 2 out of 5, and that's the end of it. Once you get the domination power back though, you start to play capture everything game. You run around and go to multiple different locations around the world trying to capture each fortress. It's a fun little game and you often capture the captains who belong to war chief, who get betrayed by your team and then can be dominated and from there you actually go after the overlord and so on. You know, it's a simple system, but you do it over and over again. Now, repetition is the name of the game here, and there's probably 10 to 20 hours of really good gameplay here, but the rest of it is playing with the orcs, the nemesis system, and just doing a ton of stuff the game expects you to do over and over to earn more story and gameplay. I'm really mixed on it, but quantity over quality, I guess. The other big change here is the level system. Talion starts now as a level 1 ranger, and the enemies are level 5, whatever that means. Now, I'm not crapping on level systems. I do love RPGs and power growth is interesting, but an action game should have its own, uh, shouldn't have levels, because it forgets that you're playing an action game. The game works best when you're fighting enemies that are near your level and have an even uh, battle with you. So why have different levels necessarily when the game works better when it's more focused? The other side of the problem is levels don't matter that much. It seems to be more of a damage modifier. Five level high and you're just hacking away like crazy. Five level lowers and your single execution from you rips their head off. But the point of the level doesn't really make sense. Whereas in Shadow Mordor, the levels only affected the level of loot that you get from them and a small amount of difficulty. And there it worked well. The gear 2 is pointless in my opinion. You're going to get gear, you can level it up, and then eventually get better gear. There's missions to unlock a little more power from the gear and the ability to upgrade it to your current level, but this piles into needless change. Honestly, it's hard not to think about uh, microtransaction systems being a driving force behind both the level system and the gear system. You know, RPG elements work best in RPGs because there's not much else in the game to show off your proudness at the game or how much you've played. Action games do have these features, but in this case the RPG elements complicate the game rather than enhance it. It also adds to the repetition because you can't dominate an enemy you might have to shame, which lowers their level by 5, and then you can dominate them the next time you see them or fight them. Overall, it's just a reason to keep playing, but it's not really a good reason. Now the combat itself at the core of the game is solid, and that's why the level system is annoying, because the game is good outside of dealing with those numbers. Combat is fluid, and we've seen the same combat multiple times, but it's, you know, it's the Y to com uh, counter, A to dodge out of the way, and you can also jump over enemies and counter. Yeah, it's, a, it's the same as Shadow of Mordor, it's also in Batman and Assassin's Creed, I've seen it a lot of times, but you know what, it's okay here. However, there's a new trick. Um, a bunch of new tricks in the game. My current favorite is the ability to take a moment in midair and shoot a ton of enemies. You'll see me pull it off at the beginning of this uh, video. And it's actually quite fun. Though the one thing is, 
lacking in combat is that there's no way to heal in the middle of a battle. You can dominate enemies or suck their life force out, okay, but it's a slow process and hard to do in the heat of battle, so the game becomes more damage avoidance, which is hard with all the different attacks and different types. It can be quite frustrating and becomes a hit and run game for some enemies and areas. Now, the other big piece of the game is the siege system, that's what you're seeing me work with now. And that's the huge battles. We're doing a siege defense here and the big moments are rather cool, but you're still fighting random enemies for the most part and it's just a huge melee. There's not real development going on. There's a lot of repetition though and you'll just dominate a lot of orcs, then siege attack and defense and then go dominate more. Of course there's more to this game, but we'll save it for the main reviews, though a few la uh, last points to make. I've said repetition a few times and really the game feels like a giant treadmill that runs for over 60 hours. It's quantity over quality approach to gaming, and if you want your money's worth in just hours played, okay you'll get it here, but personally I feel like there's too much feeler and not enough rich content that you should be paying for. The game also feels a bit passionless, like the people who made the core game just had uh, the core of this game had to make a sequel to Shadow of Mortar. What's really crazy about it is that you can feel the passion in the original game, though the Nemesis system was a bit weaker. Here, the passion is all focused on the Nemesis system, which is admittedly very cool, but the rest of the game suffers because someone wanted the Nemesis system implanted everywhere. Act 4 as, as well has gotten a lot of discussion elsewhere. That's the post game content, and you'll, that's what you see me play now. And it's a huge grind. This is a scaled down version after microtransactions were pulled out and playing the game. And I can see a lot of places where the design is... It isn't the best. And I'm going to assume that it's because of microtransactions. But the other option is that they made unfun systems and per or on purpose like the level and the grinding. Yeah, I'm going to blame the microtransactions here. I don't think the designers purposely did most of this stuff. But the alternate ending as well is... It's more problematic story. Now I have a final thought that I normally don't talk about. This game is big. If you're playing this on PC, it's 96 gigs installed. I just did an award video and every game in my award video totaled less than 50 gigs. I did the same for the uh, 14 different games I just reviewed as well. It doesn't even hit 96 gigs with all the videos generated for either of those videos. 96 gigs is huge and honestly it doesn't really live up to that size. That's not a huge negative, but when you're closing in on 100 gigs, I'm going to have to call it out. Having to delete 5 rather huge games just to get one game on my system System is a lot, and now that I'm finished, I'm glad I'm going to be recovering all that space, but it shouldn't have been taken in the first place. So where does that leave us with Shadow of War? Well the thing is, Shadow of War has its moments. The Nemesis system is stronger than ever, and I'd be lying if I didn't say that I noticed all the different characters. But the Nemesis system doesn't do much for me. The core of the game becomes the Nemesis system rather than a story or the missions. Uh, Shadow of War wants you to play in its randomized sandbox. The problem is that everything else in the game isn't just weak, it's bad. The early game is dull, the design missions eventually find their feet, but that's hours too late. The story is both infuriating and admittedly kind of boring up until the last 25% of the game. Shadow of War saves itself from being rejected by me, but nothing made it st stand out on its own, other than a huge buffet offering. It's better than Starving, but there's much better games out there. And honestly, I think it's a huge step down from Shadow of Mortar, which felt fresh and unique at its time. I give Shadow of War a... 3 out of 5. I really can't give it more. I played the DLC, I tried to find something that could really excite me, and instead, it's all a weak experience. There's good moments, but moments out of a 60 hour game is not enough. When I could have cut the game in a third and probably made it a better experience, that's a bad sign, and I can't help but wonder about the, those microtransactions because, yes they're gone, but the game overall still has all the sign of bad designs that try to push them. That's Middle Earth Shadow War, and it's a shame because I hope for another game just like the original Shadow of Mordor. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about the new hotness. Yes, Sonic Mania. Over the Christmas sale, I picked up the Encore Mode DLC for it, and we'll be talking about Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, Mighty, Ray, Pete, Other Pete, Steve, and so many more. Most of those characters are going to be coming next time. Until then, I'm King Link, and thank you for watching.